Okay, uh, we're here dealing with work and energy. <clears throat> and uh, work, energy, and power. And uh, you're going to submit something to uh, Mr. Burgraff dealing with uh, work and power. Okay, work. Uh, work is kind of an important uh, subject because uh, we're not dealing with your work. We're dealing with um, work done by an object. Uh, we can use you as an example, but uh, many times we think of work when we start to sweat and that simply is not the case. We need to start to talk a little bit about energy and its different forms because uh, work is so intricately connected to energy. So what we have is we got thermal, electric, potential, kinetic, elastic, uh, gravitational, sound, uh, chemical energy. We have all these kinds. So you know what electrical energy is because you created your electric motor. You know what um, uh, thermal energy is because you like to have a furnace in your wintertime to heat your house. Uh, elastic potential and elastic energy is something that's stored in the spring. We've got lots of different energies. We're going to talk about uh, two specifically um, and that's about it. But what is work? Work is energy transferred to an object. So here is an object I have and I want to do work to it. So I'm going to give it some energy so I'm going to lift it up. So there we have work. I'm doing work on this pen. So work is energy transferred to an object. Um, later on, we're going to look at energy. And energy is uh, work done to an object. So it's kind of an interesting uh, circular answer there. So work is energy transferred to an object. Well, how do we transfer energy into an object? Well, we have to take this object here and we have to move it through a distance, up or sideways, um, forwards or backwards. This is uh, what work is, is you're taking an object that has a mass and you're moving it through a distance. That's what work is. So work is actually a force times a distance. So you can think of your roller coaster. Um, it's starting up at the top and it's falling down. So gravity is doing work on that marble. So you have a force of gravity. So you probably have 0 0.02 grams. That's how much your marble weighs. Um, and then that is, oh, what's the force of gravity on, point, on, on a 0 0.02 grams mass? Very, very small times the distance. So normally it will go down, let's say a half a meter. And that's all the work that's done. Very li limited amount of work done on that small little device. Now we're not going to worry about trig in this particular case. So we're not going to worry about sine and cosine. And if it's on an angle, we're going to deal with force that's just in a direct line. So what is work? Uh, work is energy transferred to an object. So I'm going to put energy into an object. So I'm going to say that I'm going to give it some joules. In the olden days, it used to be calories. So work, if you want to do work on your exercise machine, so you're running and that exercise machine is going to tell you um, how much, how many calories you burned. So that is the unit of force times distance. Uh, the unit is joules. That's what we're going to be doing our work, um, transferring energy to an object. We're going to give it some joules. Um, now, the only component of force that does the work is in the direction of the force. So if, so we're going to talk a little bit about what we mean by that. Now, positive work is when an object, um, the displacement is in the direction of the force. So if I have an object, and I'm going to put it on the surface here. So here we have an object right here. And if I push it this way, the force is in this direction. I'm pushing it this direction. So I am producing a positive amount of work in that direction. It's called the applied force. However, normally if I do this, oh, it stopped. Why? Because there's friction. Friction is in the opposite direction. And so that becomes a negative uh, force. So here we have a number of different uh, examples of work done. So we're going to try to figure out what the work done in the horizontal direction is. So what we have here is in number one, 
right there, we have something. Okay, it could be your book, it could be an egg, it could be yourself sitting on a chair. And we have a 10 force is applied to push the book across a friction-free surface for a displacement of five meters to the right. So the question is, what is the work done in the horizontal direction? Well, the work normally is, it's a simple mathematical uh, formula. And what we have is, is we've got the applied force in the right direction, to the right, and it's moving five meters, hence the work done is 50 joules. Simple enough. The work in the uh, applied direct, that is the work on the applied direction. Um, however, notice we have normal and gravity. They are to the right. Sorry, they are up and down, but it's only moving to the right. They're, so force of gravity, the force of do absolutely no work. Because it's moving to the right, the for, a force applied is to the right. That's the only force. Uh, the, that's the only work that's actually being done. Now, what we have here is we have a uh, 10 Newton frictional force shows uh, slows a moving block to a stop after a displacement of five meters to the right. Notice there's no applied force. The question is, what is the horizontal work done? Horizontal work done is by friction. If it's moving to the right and it's going to the left, then of course friction does work and the friction happens to be 50 joules, but it's negative. It's opposite to the direction. Notice energy has no direction. There's no vector. It's not, we're not telling it that it's going to the left or to the right. It simply tells us how much ant joules, or in the old-fashioned term, calories, is going into the system. So if we're saying friction, friction is negative, meaning it's going in the opposite direction. Okay, so here we have another one. We have a, uh, another object, number three, and it's five meters to the right. Normal and gravity can do no work because it's not in the direction of motion. However, we have friction to the left applied to the right. And it says here that the object is actually going to the right by five meters. What's the work done? The apply, so friction, sorry, the applied, sorry, the gravity and normal do absolutely no work. There's no motion up or down. So the end result is we have the applied force, which is going to the right. The object is going to the right, so therefore we have a positive 50 joules friction, which is going to the left, but the object is going to the right, it's negative 50 joules. Now we're not looking at um, adding these energies up, we're just looking at what the forces are actually doing. And that's kind of an important thing when you're designing a car, because you want to know just what work is being done by, let's say, friction, which is opposite to motion, but you've got a motor which is applied. So you want to keep those separate to understand how these things are going to do some work. So let's find the work in the following free body diagram. This could be any object, but we have, but this object clearly, um, it's a two kilogram object and it's sliding at a constant speed across a friction free surface. Let's call it ice for a displacement of five meters. What is uh, is there any work done? No. We have normal up, we've got gravity down, but it's moving left and right. The force and the displacement must be in the same direction. So the force is up and down, displacement left and right, so there is absolutely no work done in this particular diagram whatsoever. Let's look at the next one we have. A two kilogram object, notice this is tension now. It's being pulled up. And the speed is uh, by, at a constant speed of 20, and it's being pulled up with 20 newtons. That's what the, the free body diagram says. It has a displacement in the vertical direction of five meters. What work is done? Well, because we have a force up and a force down and a displacement up, that means we've got work done. Both gravity and tension actually do work. That means we've got 20 newtons up, 
times five, which is 100, uh, 100 joules of energy. And we've got gravity, which is 20 newtons or five meters or uh, five meters down. Uh, but the five meters is going, but it's moving five meters up and we're saying it's negative 100 joules. But it's not a direction, remember, energy is never, never has a direction. Okay, so let's take a look here. We have Bob pushing a cart with a constant speed of um, horizontal velocity, a constant horizontal velocity with an applied force of 95 newtons. How much work will be done if he pushes it for 16 meters? And again, the basic formula is the following. Uh, we've got a force, we've got displacement, work is force times displacement. So what's the force? 95 times 16. Sorry, that's not the force, but that's actually what the work is. Okay, so my mistake here, there should actually be a W right there. There we go. Work is equal to, and that should almost be in brackets to keep it out of line. So this is lining up like that. That's a bit of a formatting oddity there so I, I apologize for that uh, but it's 95 times 16 we have 1500 joules now we can change that to kilojoules by moving it over three spots right just like we do to kilograms so 1.5 kilojoules um, let's take a look here we have a toboggan and rides a toboggan and a rider with a mass of 85 uh, kilograms slides horizontally for 21 meters and stops. The coefficient of friction between the toboggan and the snow is 0.11. Hmm. This sounds interesting. So here's my free body diagram right here. What is kinetic? What is the magnitude of friction? The force of friction. What's the work done by kinetic friction? So this is going to be a longer question and there's going to be a few other ones that, again, uh, we're not going to do some more complicated, longer ones. We're just going to get used to doing force, but this is uh, kind of an extended version of what work is. So what's the solution? Here's my free to body diagram. I already drew it. Um, so I have kinetic friction. Now if you remember, um, this is the formula that we had with our last unit, which was force. It's mu times Fn. So here's mu. And of course, look here. We've got the force of gravity and the force of normal. They have to be equal. So normal equals Fg. So the force of friction, notice uh, my formula here becomes mu mg. Hmm. Looks complicated, but all I did was I put fg in for fn. Here we go. So I put my numbers in. Mu is 0 0.01. Uh, my mass was 85. And of course, g, we could have kept it at 10, but because we're using our calculator here, we can put 9.8. And the force of friction happens to be 92 newtons of course, to the right, but it's moving to the left. But that's the magnitude of kinetic friction. Now, what's the work done by friction? So normally, that's what we just need to do for this unit. We're just going to deal with work. And you're going to actually do this um, before, by, before the end of the day. You're going to submit this uh, to Mr. Burgraff to, uh, to actually indicate that you actually have done the math for this. And it's a competition between everyone here to see who can get the most work or the most power out of um, your own physical body. Okay, so here is force, it's 92, and the distance is 21. So notice it's 92 left and 21, uh, sorry, 92 right and 21 left. You multiply them together, it becomes 1900 joules or 1.9 kilojoules, negative. What does that mean, the negative? It means it's going in the opposite direction of the force. That's all that means. Okay, that's pretty simple enough. Uh, zero work. Zero work can occur in motion or experience an applied force. It is work done in these cases. Zero work can occur when an object is in motion or experiences an applied force. 
is work done in a teacher applies a force to a wall and becomes exhausted is any work done work is force times displacement is there a force yes is there a displacement no no work done okay a book falls off a table and free falls to the ground is work done what's the force gravity which way is it going down is the displacement down yes is there work done answer yes that is work gravity does the work now a waiter carries a full uh, uh, a full sorry a, a waiter carries a tray full of meals above his head by one arm across the room is any work done on the tray hmm is there a force yeah there's a force up which is normal and a force down which is gravity because the, the uh, waiter is carrying the tray right but there's no friction occurring on this tray there's no force to the left or to the right but the tray is moving so is there a four is there work done on the tray the answer is no because there is no force applied left and right but it's moving left and right so there is no force uh, uh, there's no work done now a rocket accelerates through space is there work done well the answer is yes for instance the rocket right here the exhaust is going out this way so the rocket is being pushed in the direction to the left so there's a force to the left and there is a um, a displacement to the left so this rocket has force times displacement or work done on it. so that brings us to the end of work and we're going to do some examples of work uh, shortly but I did want to start to talk a little bit about power because this will start to this you're going to actually submit uh, a solution to this um, work and power by you going up the stairs in your home so that's what I want to keep uh, have you think about um, how are you going to do this what does it mean so let's think a little bit about power we now know that work is force times displacement power we have to add time we have to add time to it so number one we remember that energy has all of these different kinds work is energy transferred to an object so we have a force acting on an object moves through a distance the unit is joules power is the rate of doing work so the faster you do something the more power you have so the object here is who can actually produce the greatest amount of power climbing up the stairs in your home that's a really good question okay the units for power is joules per second guess what we also have this unit right here and of course we have the other one is horsepower those are all units of power okay so what it is it's transforming energy into something so here's our typical formula it is and again if I wrote this out it's going to be work all over time so you're going to do work and you have to figure out your time so it's also energy divided by time but we don't know what how to calculate energy that's the next uh, unit uh, sorry the next video that we're going to be looking at we're going to be dealing with potential and kinetic energy you're gonna to have to label that on your roller coaster as well um, work and power not on your roller coaster but still kind of a more a useful thing in the real world let's take a look here and then I'm going to give you your assignment and um, well we're gonna do a couple examples and then we're gonna give you your assignment uh, Bob pushes a cart with a constant horizontal velocity with an applied force of 95 
newtons. How much work will he do if he pushes uh, them for 20 meters? And how much power is used if he applies this force for 30 minutes? Okay, everything looked great. However, we do have a problem with this guy right here. And we have to change that to something else. Okay, so the solution. Here we have force, displacement, time. And this is what we have to get rid of. We have to have always, we have to have it in seconds in the physics class. But if you're dealing with a kind of a practical application, sometimes you might want to change the minutes into hours because we do like to have uh, watt hours sometimes. But anyway, here's our two formulas. This is the one that, these are the two formulas that we're going to be using. And you're going to be needing those when you're climbing up your stairs as well. So anyway, here we have work, force times displacement. So what's the force? The force happens to be 95 newtons, 20 meters. The work happens to be 90 joules. We did this before, didn't we? Wonderful. Now what it says is that this was done for 30 minutes. So that becomes work divided by time. Now notice the W is not watts. It's work. So here we have 1900 joules and it's 1800 seconds. The grand total is 1.05 joules per second. That's the number of, that is the power that was um, used during this cart was when this cart was pushed. Okay, so we're going to go, we're going to give you this assignment uh, very shortly, but I do want to see, um, okay, so this is an aside here because some people would start to think, now wait a minute, what is torque? Ooh, torque and levers. Um, what's all this about? Because we might want to think that um, work and torque is the same thing and it's not. Torque is the force times distance, but it has to do with a wrench. It's not simply a wrench, but it's also wheels. It's things that are turning. This is um, the amount of twist on an object. So it has nothing to do with work. What it has to do is you want to make sure that you do not apply too much force to an object that's being twisted, for instance, the nut. If you're going to put a nut on a head gasket on an engine, you have a steel bolt going into a, an aluminum head. And if you apply too much force onto it, you're going to do some stripping and it's going to ruin the, the engine uh, block um, the head uh, when you put the head, new head gasket on. So anyway, again, forces in Newtons. Uh, we have this force and distances in meters. So we have an, uh, a distance from the rigid object. So here is our nut and here's our wrench. So we have 25 meters and I'm going to apply 85, 84 newtons at 20 at, sorry, 0.25 meters. It can't be 25 meters. If you have a wrench that's 25 meters long, yeah, I'd like to see that one. Anyway, so let's calculate the torque on the wrench. Its torque is equal to force times the distance, or in other words, 84 times 0.25, or 21 newton meters. Nothing to do with work, okay? Nothing to do with work, nothing to do with power, nothing to do with uh, this unit of, um, um, of work. Uh, but it's kind of an important concept, especially if you're going to get into any mechanical... Um, objects like auto mechanics or even uh, any other form of, uh, of mechanics uh, that you're going to have to use bolts and such to tighten things, uh, not, uh, wrenches to tighten things down. So that's that's kind of an important an aside. So uh, just to be aware of that. Okay. Uh, so, so we have lots of work here. I'm not going to be dealing with a lot of the stuff, but let's... Um, Let's look at some of these examples here. Uh, we're not going to do a whole lot here, but this is in your notes. So let's take a look here. Oh, here we go. 
So I moved over to OneNote so I could actually do some work here. You should be able to get a scrap piece of paper slide it in here. So uh, this actually is 5-1. It's kind of out of a textbook, but let's take a look at what it wants to ask us. It says, how much work is done by the applied force? So what we have is, we have a force which is equal to 25 newtons. And it says the cart moves, that means the distance of 13 meters. And then it says, what's the work done? Work is equal to force times displacement. Or, might as well use our calculator that we have it. It's 25 times 13 equals. Or in other words, let's zoom in here. That is going to be 325 joules of work is done Uh, by this force on that cart. Simple enough. Okay, so let's try one that maybe is a little bit more challenging. Oh, what happened there? Let's go back up here. Something jumped a little bit, so I'm going to draw a line here. This is number two. And what we have is we have a car. Here's my car. It is being pulled. And there is a force of 1500 newtons is equal to the force applied. The frictional force pulling backwards is going to be 810 newtons. And of course we've got normal, we've got the force of gravity, but guess what? We don't care. It has nothing to do with work because work is left and right, not up and down in this particular case. Oh, we do have one thing. The displacement happens to be 12 meters. Okay, so there's our free body diagram. So here, let's go back over here. Number one, it says, what is the work done? Work done on uh, by number one, the tow truck. Okay, work done by the tow truck is equal to force times displacement, which is 1,500 times 20, oh, not 21, times 12. So that's going to give me a grand total of 1,500 times 12 equals joules. There we have it. Okay, what's the next one? B, what is the work done? The work done by friction, and that is the force of friction times distance, or displacement rather, and that is 810 times 12 meters, and we'll put this down here, and that's going to give me 810 times 12 equals is 9,720 9, joules. Okay, the rest, what's the work done by gravity and normal? Displacement in the y direction happens to be zero. There's no displacement up and down, it's zero. So work by normal is zero, work by Gravity is zero. Simple enough. Now, let's move on here. Ooh, we can do that one, but we're going to let that one go. Let's take a look here, see if we can find something that has to do with uh, power. And we're looking for power. Okay, here we have, um, yes. Uh, we're going to have to wait to do that one there. Okay, this is work. I think the best thing we're going to do right now is um, this is what you're going to do. Um, let's say this is Matt. We're going to do one for Matt. So let's say Matt was... Uh, 
Uh, we're going now going to do we're going to do the work and power format. Work and power. So what's work? Work is force times distance, and power is equal to work. Let's make it long form over time. That's what Matt's going to do. Matt has to do this. Like, it, like you're all going to do this. So, um, what's Matt going to do? Well, this is what Matt's going to do. He's going to find a full flight of stairs. So that's going to give you what? 10, 10 to twenty steps. There we go. Okay. So this is the second story. Or you could go from the basement to the first story. But there's your stairs. So here's Matt right here. And Matt's going to run all the way up the stairs as fast as he can. And he's going to calculate his work. And he's going to calculate his power. Step number one, he does need to calculate this right here. That's the distance that he's traveling in the vertical direction. That distance, what is it? You have to measure it. Okay, uh, some houses are different, uh, but our house, it probably is equal to a grand total of 11 uh, feet. But we can't use feet. I have to have it in meters. And in this particular case, it could easily be uh, maybe 2.5 meters. I'm not too sure exactly how much it is. You're going to have to use something to measure the distance between here and there. The other thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to time it. And you're going to do this probably uh, three times. So T1 plus T2 plus T3. Do it three times and divide by three. So let's say it took three seconds. Now you're going to fill in a simple solution. What is work? Matt is going to do some work. And guess what's doing? Guess what? Matt's overcoming what? When he's climbing up the stairs, he's overcoming the force of gravity. And he's multiplying, he's got a distance to travel. So what is Matt's force of gravity? Let's draw Matt. Here's Matt. The force of gravity. This is the normal force. When he's standing, what's the force of gravity? It is mg. So we put mg times the distance. So, the, uh, so what's his mass? So what Matt needs to do is he needs to go on to the scale and he needs to measure his mass. So let's say his mass happens to be 50 grams. Sorry. I'm sorry, he's uh, not a, uh, a bird. He's an actual person. So let's say it's 50 kilograms. And of course, mass is in kilograms, so that's 50. Gravity, it's 9.8, but we're going to leave it at 10. And the distance in our particular stairs was 2.5. You have to measure your own stairs. So there we go. So that's what you're going to do. It's going to go 50 times 10 and this is what you're going to, you're going to submit every single line and all the data that you have and that's the grand total so Matt's work done climbing the stairs happens to be 1.250 joules not bad step number two we're gonna have four steps the next one is power Power is work over time. Now, what Matt's got to do is he's going to put work down one, two, five, zero, all divided by, and we said he ran three seconds. So 1,250 1, divided by three equals, and that is joules per second. That's his 
power climbing up the stairs. So here comes the competition. We're going to see who can actually get most power. Not work, but most power. You're going to submit it to Mr. Burgraff and we'll see who actually had the most power. How can you gain power? That's where you're going to do it all over again. So what's going to happen here is Matt's going to do this all over again, but what he's going to do is he's going to add a mass when he's climbing up the stairs. So he's going to pick up a mass. So you could pick up some books. You could pick up, let's say, a couple of uh, dumbbells. Um, put something in your backpack. So what's going to happen here? So I'm going to bring this back down. And this is what you're going to do. So Matt's going to do it all over again. He's going to go work is equal to force times gravity times displacement. So he's going to go back on the scale. He's got some extra mass. So let's say he now has 100 kilograms. Same type of thing. Mass times gravity times, dis times distance. Mass is now 100 kilograms. Gravity is 10, and you've got a distance up to the top of the stairs, 2.5. Here is the solution then. You've got 100 whoops, times 9.8, which is about 10, times 2.5 equals. And that is a grand total of 2,500. Oops, let's type that in there. That's the amount of energy that Matt had transferred to his being because he ran up the stairs. So the next thing, let's bring back down again. You're going to do power all over again. So you're going to submit this, 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 and finally, you're going to have to do power and power is your new work divided by time or in this particular case oh it looks like I moved this one there it is there my work uh, sorry my work happens to be 2500 joules divided by the time so you're gonna to have to redo your time so now that you got an added mass, you're going to have to redo your time. Um, so this time, you're going to have to do T1 plus T2 plus T3 all over divided by 3. So let's say in this particular case, you got 4 seconds. Obviously, you've got more mass. It's going to take you a little bit longer. So let's take a look at uh, what's going to take place. So let's say we've got 2500 divided by 4 seconds. What's my um, new power? Joules per second. What we want to do is we want to determine who's got the most power. Notice, let's bring it back down again. When he ran up the stairs the first time, he had a 416 joules per second for his power, and now he's at 625 joules per second. He's increasing his power by adding a certain amount of mass. Now, mind you, if we were to have, uh, let's say, Matt, Matt uh, carry four times his mass, Obviously, his power is going to drop because it's just way too much work for him to climb up there, those stairs in a short time period. So this is what you're going to do. Uh, let's review what you're going to do is you're going to do work and power, climbing up your stairs all by yourself. And then what you're going to do is you're going to climb up the stairs with an added amount of mass to see how much more power you can get. Okay? Very, very interesting to see how much power you can get 
and let's see who can get the most power. The most one that I've ever seen was a student who was working in the cement industry all of his high school career, uh, put another student on his back and ran up the stairs and he had one massive amount of power output. Well, this brings us to the end of this lesson and uh, try to get those um, two questions submitted to Mr. Burgraff really, really quickly and that should be interesting. Okay, hopefully I'll be able to edit and uh, correct some of the mistakes we had there. So here we go. Um, let's, that's the end of the lesson.